Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Sick MRI, and this is a 35-year-old male with complaints of right shoulder pain and some instability, and this is a coronal view. We're looking straight at the shoulder. We can see a round ball, which is the humeral head, which is the humeral shaft, and the humeral head sits and rotates in this cup here called the glenoid, part of the scapula. The scapula goes over here as well. The AC joint is up top. There's a little bit of fluid in the AC joint. It's mild arthritis, and there's another little bit of brightness over here. This is fluid along the superior and posterior glenoid rim, and this is what we call a paralabral cyst. So the labrum goes around the rim of the cup here, and along the superior and posterior margin, there's a little fluid collection, and almost invariably, we see things hugging the glenoid like this, hugging the cup. They're a cyst that comes off of this little triangular piece of fibrocartilage. So this is called the labrum. The labrum goes around the rim of the cup. It helps the humeral head sit deeper in there, and they can tear when it does. Fluid can leak out and go backwards over here and cause this little paralabral cyst. So on this view, we know they must have some labral pathology with a labral cyst over here. It looks like it may erode the bone. This is another view of the same thing. We can see that paralabral cyst here. It's long-standing because we can see the bone is scalloped. And so this is chronically eroding the bone. And here's the labrum here. You can't really see the labral tear on this. Sometimes they'll um, tear and have a cyst develop and then the uh, labral tear will scar down, you just don't see it. But now we're going to look on another view. This is a view we're looking straight on at the shoulder, and now we're going to look at a view from top down. And so this is called an axial view. Now the front is over here, the back is over here. This is the deltoid muscle in the back. Here's the deltoid muscle out in the side. Here's the deltoid muscle in front. This is just artifact over here where the shoulder is too close to the coil. And now we're going to look at that labrum again. Now before we can see the top and bottom, now we can see the front and back. In the front of the labrum is this little triangle right here looking normal, nice and jet black, normal morphology. In the back of the labrum doesn't look quite right. It looks really large. And there's a couple little speckles of bright fluid back here. And so this is a tear that goes through the base of this posterior labrum. Pretty hard to see on this view, but there's a tear that goes right through the base of this, and it communicates with this cyst in back here we saw in the other view. And this is associated with something else. Number one, we see this brightness along the back. This is the posterior joint capsule. When this labrum tore, the posterior joint capsule is also partially torn and partially stripped from the back of this. This triangle is the bone, and the black area is the cortex, and this is that joint capsule, and it's partially stripped from back here. Again, there's a tear that goes right through the base of this, which you really can't see very well. We know it's there. And the other thing is the glenoid should be a nice golf tee-shaped structure. But instead, it looks pretty small in this view. It looks normal up front, but in the back, it looks like there's a piece absent over here. Same here. It's really not symmetric from front to back. If we go towards the top, same thing, really asymmetric. It looks good up front, but in the back, it slants downward. So this is what we call hypoplasia, glenoid hypoplasia. And this is some pretty significant hypoplasia in this patient. Sometimes it's very subtle. But in this patient, it goes up forward, makes a nice cup. In the back, it goes backwards. It loses that con uh, concave appearance, and it's convex. And so when this happens, you get compensatory enlargement of this posterior labrum and joint capsule. This is what we call a capsular labral complex. It just can gets compensatorily enlarged, and the humeral head can sublux backwards because this is just not holding on. It's not pushing against bone. It's pushing against this fibrocartilaginous structure which is not nearly as strong, and it will lead to a posterior labral tear, just like we see here, and posterior joint capsule tear. So this is a uh, slip backwards. You can also see the glenoid, maybe the central glenoid is here, and the humeral head is backwards, a little bit relative to the glenoid. So we have mild posterior subluxation or slippage because this is unstable, and the joint capsule is lax back here. So we have a few things here again, a hypoplastic posterior glenoid, with associated enlargement of the posterior capsule labral complex, with associated laxity and posterior subluxation of the humeral head, with associated chronic tear of the labrum, and tear of this posterior capsule labral complex from this going back too far and stripping this off from the periosteum here. And the paralabral cysts that we see, we have we see one down here, and we see one up here. And that's it. Thank you very much.